I want to stay with this market sell-off and bring in David Lefkowitz, head of Equities Americas at UBS Global Wealth Management. David, welcome to the show. And just want to start with, you know, this fluid situation between Russia and Ukraine. How is that guiding your decisions there with your clients when you take a look at their portfolios right now? Yeah, thanks, Alexis. Uh, look, it, you know, it is a fluid situation, uh, as you've described. Um, you know, we, we still think, though, the the it's not likely we're going to see outright military conflict between the parties. Uh, so in, in our view, this is this is more of a tail risk. And, and obviously, there are things to do to protect uh, in terms of a tail risk or a tail event that might lead to a more pronounced sell off in markets. But in our base case, we think that there will be some non-military solution. Uh, there would be a lot to lose from a lot of parties if, if uh, Russia does uh, move down the path of, of military conflict. Uh, the sanctions that we've put in place, I mean, Europe potentially has a lot to lose also in terms of energy flows into its economy, into those countries. So the stakes are pretty high and, and we think there's, there's definitely scope for the parties to find some common ground outside of a, of a military option. Well, we certainly do hope so and don't want to think of worst case scenario. But if there is going to be military action here, how does that sort of change your outlook over the next weeks, months, and perhaps even the rest of the year when it comes to exposure to the U.S. equity market? Yeah, it's it's a tricky question because it really depends on how much of an escalation we're talking about. Um, you know, worst case scenario, if if we're talking about a, a, a prolonged disruption of energy flows into Europe, I mean that that would obviously be very very disruptive. Uh, if we're talking about a, a a quick action, and and usually these types of events tend to be fairly quick in terms of military action, you could see. You could see a sell-off, but then you could see a, a quick rebound right after that. So you know, it, it's hard to know precisely how this will play out, obviously. Um, but we, we still think that uh, the most likely scenario is that we'll avoid that, that outright military confrontation. When you look at how investors are sort of positioning themselves right now, I, I know that gold is pulling back today, but it's still on track for its best week in about nine months. Uh, you also have an interesting reaction here in the oil markets. I'm looking at WTI crude. It's hanging at around $91 a barrel right now. I remember just a few days ago, it was marching pretty steadily toward that $100 a barrel mark. What do you make of the commodities trade right now? And are you doing anything differently in that space? Yeah, no, we, we, we haven't really made any changes. I, I mean, I think there's a couple of things going on with, with oil. Right? There's, there's also some, uh, some thoughts coming into the market that there, there could be an agreement between the U.S. and Iran. So that would lead to some additional barrels coming onto the market. That would be, I mean, it's going to take some time for those parties to, to reach an agreement. Um, but that, that could be what's causing oil to, to come down a little bit. But we still don't think it really changes the longer term outlook for supply and demand. And, and we still are in an environment where demand has recovered pretty nicely. It's probably going to continue to recover as people get back on airplanes and things like that. Uh, and companies have really not been investing very much in terms of new supply. So we think it's still going to be a pretty tight oil market that should be supportive for oil prices. Now on gold, um, you know, we think interest rates do rise further. Uh, obviously, when there's uncertainty like we're seeing in the markets, it can be a safe haven. But again, in our base case, interest rates rising a bit more, real interest rates also rising, that tends to depress gold prices. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I think you need, need to make a distinction between different parts of the commodity complex when you're talking about whether it be energy or, or precious metals. And I, I just want to bring your attention to the housing market for a minute and stocks that are related to housing. We see lumber prices certainly going through the roof right now, and that's part of that is because of supply chain issues. But the housing market is still very strong. We had home sales jumping 6.7 percent in January. Looks like buyers might want to get ahead of those higher mortgage rates that could be coming down the pike. Do you see strength and opportunity in those housing related stocks? further into the year as, you know, the purchase of a home gets further out of reach for so many people. Yeah, Alexis, I, I mean, I, I think we're, we're going to, we're expecting that the housing market will still remain fairly robust. Uh, and, and that's really, yes, mortgage rates are moving higher, but when you, when you do the math, you know, a percentage point increase in the mortgage rate 
doesn't it doesn't materially change the the calculus when it comes to buying a home obviously it has some impact but it, it's not dramatic and i think it's also important to bear in mind that consumers are are in really good shape from a balance sheet perspective debt levels are quite low relative to incomes and certainly the cost of servicing that debt is is quite low wages are rising the the job market is is very strong so we think there's still a lot of support for consumer spending broadly and and we know that uh, you know people are still kind of uh, adjusting to the pandemic in terms of the type of housing they want uh, not necessarily in cities uh, looking for bigger homes uh, millennials are also starting to buy homes so there's there's a lot of support for additional demand in housing but mortgage rates will have a little bit of a cooling off effect, but we, we think it's manageable. And finally, you know, we're heading into a long holiday weekend here in the U.S. with all of this uncertainty, this geopolitical uncertainty. What would you tell average investors right now watching this, uh, thinking, you know, maybe I should hold on to cash, maybe I should be getting out of some positions? What are some costly mm -hmm. errors or mistakes they should be avoiding on a day like today? Yeah, it's a great point, Alexis. I, I mean, so one of the things that we're picking up is that extremely depressed investor sentiment. Um, when we look at the surveys, you can see this, you can look at what's happening in the options market, put call ratios, things like that. Investor sentiment is very cautious. When that has happened in the past, and we still see very good business activity, and we still are seeing that. Corporate profits uh, for the S&P were up uh, nearly 30% in the fourth quarter. We think we're still on track for double digit gains in corporate profits this year. I mean, all the commentary we're, we're seeing from companies is, is talking about very strong demand. So whenever there's a, there's a disconnect between investor sentiment, which is quite low right now, and uh, business activity, those actually tend to be very good buying opportunities. So I, I would not overreact to the headlines. In fact, I would be thinking about using this opportunity as, as a way to, to start deploying some cash into the market. All right, David Lefkowitz, head of Equities Americas, UBS Global Wealth Management. Enjoy your long holiday weekend. Thanks so much.